happy birthday it was the other day to Mick Jagger turning 80. Big star-studded bash at a Chelsea nightclub. Along with his family, his fiance, his ex. Yeah. Who was there? Georgia May Jagger, 31, his daughter, his 36-year-old fiance, Melanie Hamrick, and his ex-partner of 23 years, Jerry Hall. And I want to sidebar for a second, Barnes. Do you remember Jerry Hall? Yeah, of course. She, um, after Mick, you know, she married billionaire Rupert Murdoch. Remember? No, I did not know that. They were together for like six or seven years. But sidebar story, he broke up with her in a text message. Oh. She was supposed to meet him in 2022 at their home. And he texted her. Yeah, Rupert Murdoch. I wonder who she would be in succession. I know. Jerry, sadly, I've decided to call an end to our marriage. We've certainly had some good times. But I have much to do. My New York lawyer will be contacting yours immediately. That's Can pretty you imagine? Cold. I mean, what? I mean, what? That sounds very Rupert Murdoch of him. Uh, yeah. Anyway, glad she and Mick are still friends. We've talked about this. It's shocking. A London jury found Kevin Spacey not guilty of nine sexual abuse charges against four men. After the verdict, Spacey said he was enormously grateful to the jury and humbled by the outcome of the trial. I guess what I'm thinking, Barnes, is what do you think he will announce as his first project? I don't know. You know, he'll be in some movie and who will cast him, we'll see. I, who's going to take that risk, though? I mean, you don't know what the public vibe is going to be, if there's going to be backlash. That's what I'm thinking. But he's such a good actor, do you, because the court has spoken, right? The people have spoken and he's innocent in, you know, on paper. So do you give him a chance? It'll be know. interesting to see, and of course, to see if he is, you know, also any lawsuits impending. Well, which, and the people have spoken also about our little Eve 6 drama, where Eve 6 music has been paused on the station. And by the way, Max from Eve 6, all this Twitter firestorm has gotten to him. He will be on the show to talk about all this on Monday. And I think the fans will have to decide if that music comes back or not after they hear what he has to say. Yeah, it's crazy because I have not seen this much action on my Twitter account in a long time. It's a lot. And it's all about Eve 6. Um, you know, the SAG after strike obviously still going on. A lot of actors have been outspoken, including Brian Cranston, delivering a fiery speech at a rally in Times Square, including a direct message at Bob Iger, director, of course, and the head of Disney. I know, sir, that you look through things through a different lens. We don't expect you to understand who we are, but we ask you to hear us, and beyond that, to listen to us when we tell you we will not be having our jobs taken away and giving to robots. We will not have you take away our right to work and earn a decent living. Shots fired. Wow. Cranston coming in hot. Sounds like he was losing his voice as well. Yeah, dude, go, he Brian. is fired up. We talked about this the other day in Sleaze when we were talking about um, Matchbox 20's push being in the Barbie, Barbie movie. Remember I said I wonder how this is going to affect sales and streams? We actually have a report. Yeah, this is actually pretty cl very cool. First of all, the Indigo Girls, closer to fine, appearing three times in the Barbie movie, pulled 32,000 official on-demand streams. And uh, it's the duo's biggest Billboard Hot 100 hit, collecting 100,000 streams, just under 100,000 streams, which is a huge increase. And then Matchbox 20's Push, uh, which, by the way, that was, I think, their very first Grammy nomination. In that movie has earned 235,000 official on-demand streams. Dang. And they're saying by July 24th the other day, they experienced a 43.3% increase. That is the power of that movie, Barnes. And by the way, a whole new generation getting to hear Push and Closer to Fine. I'll be curious to hear the residual effect of like Indigo Girls, because not that they have, we were in Atlanta, so we're more sensitive to knowing what they're up to, but to get that kind of, you know, tripling their streams into six figures, Amazing. will that, you know, make them pop in some interesting resurging way, or do they even want to? Well, you know, it's a, they have this incredible fan base, and they yeah. tour all the time. But, you know, like I said, a whole new generation getting to hear that song is so amazing. And it's such a great song. After dominating the box office and, you know, breaking records with Barbie, 
Oh, you knew this was coming. Mattel has officially arrived in Hollywood. The next toy you might see on the big screen, Polly Pocket. Lily Collins is set to star as the micro doll in a family comedy written and directed by creator Lena Dunham. There you go. It's happening, Barnes. Yeah. Get ready for the, the the assault on toys. Yeah. On the cover of People magazine, Dennis Quaid, relying on his faith during the toughest of times. Quote, I'm grateful to still be here. I'm grateful to be alive really every day. 69 years old, telling this cover story in People, it's important to really enjoy your ride in life as much as you can because there's a lot of challenges and stuff to knock it down. We know that. For Quaid, you know, those challenges included past struggles with addiction. And after making a name for himself, you know, he was in a lot of big movies. Remember Breaking Away, The Right Stuff, Great Balls of Fire. Quaid checked himself into rehab, or as he refers to it, cocaine school. Listen to this. You know, is it only me, Fram? When I hear Dennis Quaid, I also picture Kevin Costner, like in my head. What in what in what way? The way they look very similar, and I think. Oh, you mean in looks? Yeah, I I never thought about that because I think Dennis has sort of like a you know a very unique look. I don't know why I think Yellowstone when you when you started talking about that story, I thought this was all of a sudden about him. But yeah, I don't know why I confuse those two guys. But yeah, pretty. Um, he sounds like he's really trying to turn the corner. Yeah, he really does. I don't have any regrets about life or anything, but I'm really glad I'm not in that life anymore. I mean, I stopped because I came home and I was in a band. We got a record deal. And they broke up because of me, because I was just, I, I was I was not uh, reliable. And it was, you know, I don't know. But I, I remember going home and having kind of a white light experience that I saw myself either dead or in jail or losing everything I had. And, you know, I didn't want that. It's kind of surprising that I had I didn't know any about any of this. I didn't know he was having issues. Yeah, he did for a while, and you know, it's uh, he's getting ready to do a gospel record. He's got a band. He does music as well on the side. But I just remember how great he was in Great Balls of Fire. Remember interviewing him up at the uh, Ritz Carlton? We went up to that top floor. Yes. Yes. In the same room where the Dalai Lama uh, interview That's happened. Right. It's the same place. So Dennis Quaid and Dalai Lama have slept in the same bed. Oh my goodness. Will Barbenheimer still be number one at the box office? We'll see. Haunted Mansion, that new Disney movie, $30 million debut. And I do want to end with this because people are still talking, you know, about Sinead O'Connor and her effect. I don't know if you saw this post from Russell Crowe. It's like one of the most poetic things I've ever seen talking about running into Sinead O'Connor. I'm going to read a little bit of this because it's very long, but, you know, think of it in Russell Crowe's voice. Last year, working in Ireland, having a pint in the cold outside a Dalky pub with some new friends, a woman with purpose strode by us. Puffy Parker zipped to the nap and her bowed head covered in a scarf. One of my friends muttered an exclamation, jumped up and pursued the woman. Anyway, he goes on to say that they had tea together for a long time and then he wraps it with her second cup was taking on the night air. She rose, embraced us all, and strode away into the fog-dimmed streetlights. Doesn't that sound like a poem? Completely. Yeah, he was just talking about what an amazing person that she was, and he ended ended it with Peace Be With You, Courageous Heart, Sinead. You can see that on Russell Crowe's Instagram and Twitter. Really, really, really nice tribute. And Barnes, that's your celebrity sleaze. The Morning X. With Barnes and Leslie. 99X.